Hello friends, once again welcome back to Triple E Tutorial channel. Here in this video we will see the construction of single phase NRG meter and its working. Okay. We know that NRG meter is a type of device. It is very familiar with everyone I think in our home and some every industries every shops and everywhere you can see energy meters it is very necessary to measure the electrical energy okay so energy meter is a device which is used to measure the total energy consumption for a consumer of a consumer for a given period of time that means it is a type of integrating instrument. So what is meant by an integrating type instrument? Means which will integrate or add the energy consumption or load, the energy consumption of load for a given period of time. That means it will update the energy consumption during each interval of time. And finally, they will inter we can see that it will integrate the overall reading or the overall energy consumption for a given period of time. Okay. So the function of energy meter is to measure the total energy consumption for a given period of time and which measure energy in kilowatt hour. Okay. This unit is very important and it is a very less, less expensive and very accurate device. Here you can see a picture. This is the energy meter. Here you can see some dials here, and this is the aluminium disc. The rotation of the aluminium disc will give the total energy consumption. Okay, we will discuss about that points in the coming uh, slides. Okay, so now let us see the construction of energy meter. So, for the construction of energy meter, four mechanisms are very essential. That is driving system or driving mechanism, moving mechanism, braking mechanism and finally registering mechanism or registering system. So, we will see these four mechanisms in detail. The first mechanism for the construction of energy meter that we need that is driving system here you can see the construction of energy meter for the driving system two electromagnets are essential here one is shunned type electromagnet or shunned electromagnet and the second one is series electromagnet so shunt and series electromagnets series electromagnets are the two essential requirements for the driving system okay first let us see about the series electromagnet we know that electromagnet means what we can control the flow of we can control the magnetic flux by controlling the flow of current that is the speciality of electromagnet when compared with the permanent magnet. Okay, here we are using electromagnets. So, coil is wounded on the center limb of this uh, shunned magnet, shunned electromagnet. This E shaped portion indicates the shunned electromagnet, and this C shaped electromagnet is the series electromagnet in series electromagnet it is made up with v shaped laminations of silicon steel this point is very very important for technical exam point of view so you can remember this point the series electromagnet is made up with the v shaped laminations of silicon steel with the thick turns of few coils okay here you can see few turns of thick coils and this series 
coils or the coils bonded on the series electromagnet which are connected in series with the load so that they carries load current okay it is very uh, important for technical exams okay so the current coil carries load current so that they are made up with thick turns of few coils okay so that the flux produced by the current coil will be exactly in phase with the load current okay so now let us see what is meant by shunned electromagnet so we uh, as we have already seen in the previous slide this e shaped portion indicates the shunned electromagnet and the coil bounded on the cinder limb is the shunned winding okay and remember the shunned coil or the shunned uh, the windings on the shunned electromagnets are connected across the load okay or it, we can say that it is connected across the ac supply okay so that we can call this shunned coil as potential coil similarly here the current uh, the series coil which is connected in series with the load so that we can call this series coil as current coil and we can call the shunt coil as the pressure coil okay but to make better driving torque the flux produced in the shunt coil must lag the applied voltage exactly by 90 degree but in the case of current coil we have seen that the flux produced in the current coil is in phase with the load current but here the flux produced in the pressure coil must lag the supply voltage exactly by 90 degree so what is the purpose to make the driving torque if driving torque is not there then the aluminum disc will not rotate okay in this diagram you can see the aluminum disc this violet colored portion indicates the aluminum disc and a pointer is attached along with this aluminum disc to record the entire reading okay so to make this phase difference or phase lagging in shunt coil we will connect a copper shading batch or simply a shading batch in the center limb of the shunt magnet or shunt coil this blue colored portion indicates the copper shading batch so what is the purpose of using this copper shading batch it will make the phase difference of 90 degree for the flux produced in the pressure coil with the ac supply for that we will use a copper shading batch okay so now we will move on to the next requirement for the construction of energy meter that is moving system we know that for the moving system in energy meter aluminum disc is the moving system here you can see the violet colored portion indicates the aluminum disc and this aluminum disc is placed in between the air gap of shunned electromagnet and series electromagnet okay when the consumer use any loads then we can see some flux will sets up in the pressure coil and the current coil 
the flux produced in the pressure coil will exactly lag 90 degree with the supply voltage but the flux produced in the current coil will be in phase with the load current so due to the interaction of these two flexors means remember that this aluminium disc is placed in between these two magnets that means which will come in contact with these two flexes so that the interaction of these two flexes will make necessary driving torque in the aluminium disc so that in each rotation of the aluminium disc it will cut the flexes two flexes that means for each rotation of aluminium disc it will cut the flux produced by the pressure coil and the flux produced by the current coil so that two eddy currents will induce in this aluminium disc okay this is the moving mechanism included for the construction of energy meter so now we will discuss about the third mechanism that is the braking mechanism okay so we have discussed about the rotation of aluminium disc now the aluminium disc is rotating but it is necessary to control the rotation of the aluminium disc for that we will use a braking magnet at the end of this aluminium disc and this braking magnet is made up with a permanent magnet but remember these magnets means shunt and series magnets are made up with electromagnets the braking magnet is made up with permanent magnet and remember this which is placed like this when the aluminium disc rotates we can see that it will in uh, for the each revolution of this aluminium disc this disc will cut the magnetic flux produced by the permanent magnet also okay got it for the each rotation of this aluminium disc this will cut the flux produced by the permanent magnet thereby an eddy current will induce in the aluminium disc okay and this eddy current will just opposes the rotation of the aluminium disc that means this eddy current will just opposes the other eddy currents produced in the aluminium disc so due to this opposing mechanism or due to this braking mechanism the speed of rotation of the aluminium disc can control so this is the point about the braking mechanism okay so remember the position of the shunt electromagnet and series electromagnet aluminium disc is placed in between these two magnet and a spindle or a pointer is attached along with the aluminium disc and it will record the reading and a braking magnet or a permanent magnet is placed at one end of the aluminium disc to control the speed of rotation of the aluminium disc okay this is the main point about the braking system next we will discuss about the registering mechanism or counting mechanism of energy meter to count the entire utilization of electrical power or electrical energy the energy meter will record each rotations rotation of the aluminium disc in and it will integrate and finally we will get the entire utilization of electrical power uh, sorry energy in kilowatt hour for that we will use the type of pointer type registering mechanism or any, or any kind of registering mechanism can be used here here in this diagram you can see a pointer type registering mechanism and based on the rotation of the aluminium disc we will finally integrate and finally calculate the electrical energy utilization okay this is the main point about the registering mechanism so these are the main four 
systems which is important or needed for the construction of energy meter. So finally, here we are going to discuss about the working of energy meter. The energy meter is the device which works based on the principle of Faraday's laws of electromagnetic induction. That means the aluminium disc will rotate in between the shunt and series electromagnets on the basis of the interaction of the flux produced by the shunt and series electromagnets. In the case of shunt electromagnet, the flux produced by the shunt, electro, uh, shunt coil is exactly lagged 90 degree by the supply voltage. For that, we will use copper band on the center limb of the shunt magnet. So that due to this phase difference, a torque will induce in the aluminum disc and this torque is necessary or sufficient to move the aluminum disc. To control the movement of this aluminum disc, we will use a permanent magnet at the one end of the aluminum disc. Okay, so when the when these two flexes come in contact with each other, the aluminum disc will cut the flex and thereby an eddy current will induce or a current will induce in the aluminum disc according to Faraday's law. And to control the speed of rotation of aluminum disc, we will connect a braking brake magnet at the one end of the aluminum disc. And during each revolution, it will cut the flux produced by the permanent magnet and it will induce an eddy current on the aluminum disc, which will oppose the rotation of the aluminum disc. In this way, we will control the speed of rotation and in each time interval of time interval, the conception of electrical power is recorded by the registering mechanism. Okay, this is the entire working of the energy meter. So thank you for watching my channel.